कर्चरणकृतम कर्मज श्रवणनयन जनसम वराधम विहित विहित वर्वेतत्मस्व जय जय करुणाब्धे श्रीमहादेव शंभो ये पुटे फिंगर ऑन कैप्रिकॉन फ्रॉम देयर काउंट वेरी द आत्मकारक नो बर्थ इन आत्मकारक आई यू दी वर्ड नॉट कारक आंसर आत्मकारक मीन्स इन दी बर्थ हॉरोस्कोप यू आर सी वेरी द आत्मकारक एट हाउस आई सी पेन टू हिम The doctors have said, "Well, the operation is highly successful." I remembered what thirty years ago my guruji had told me. They see predestination. We work out astrologically. My advantage in life has been a yogi has said certain thing. I have worked astrologically. When both come to one point, I say, "Well, I am on very sure grounds." My best researches in astrology have come from the hints given by yogis. So this is the one case study which I presented in this book, along with many other. Now, in the Navansha, very Dara Karak, Capricorn, Dara Karakan size Capricorn. Right. The dasha he was going to enter was going to be Capricorn, from where Atmakarak was falling in the eighth. Am I clear? When the Atmakarak is ill placed from a dasha running, it has to be uncomfortable period. Uncomfortable in what ways? No man is actually happy. Except unless he is a yogi, life always is a an art of balancing between happiness and unhappiness. When you have transcended that, there is no happiness, there is no unhappiness because there is no duality left for you. But so long as duality is there, there is no such thing as a happy time. There is no such thing as an unhappy time. on the balance partly it is happy in one direction partly it is unhappy in the and other direction and char dasha in one microscopic glance shows you all this at once now what am i seeing i am seeing he is going to enter makar dasha makar dasha is From here, Atmakarak is falling in the eighth house, and when he enters Makar Dasha, he touches Dara Karakansha. Doctor say your wife's operation has been successful, but I look at Vinshotri Dasha, Mercury, Venus, Mercury. I look at the Char Dasha. Then of course I look at it so many from other angles. I hear doctors have said this, but I am seeing this. Try to understand. And the problem is very clear here. The problem is relating to his wife, because Makar contains. दारा कारकांशा नाउ इज द प्रॉब्लम क्लियर टू यू फ्रॉम बोथ एंगल्स इन विंशो थ्री दशा इट इज मर्करी सब पीरियड इन वेनस मेजर पीरियड स्ट्रेट इन बोथ वे सेवेंथ हाउस रिलेटिंग टू वाइफ एंड हियर वेन आई कम हियर आई आई एम रीचिंग दिस पीरियड then this period and in this period i find it is touching the dara karakansha 
at this age, I am not going to predict marriage to an Indian, Orthodox Indian. Born in 1908, in 1978, at the age of 70, event relating to his wife is what is striking me. When Shotri Dasha has clarified, Gemini Dasha is clarifying the same thing. So events are moving in that direction. Where is his moon in the birth horoscope? Seven. 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 Tula. In the year 1978, where was Saturn? Leo. One year later, Saturn would enter which place? And the Sade Sati would also begin. You get my point? Yes. As an astrologer, I see what? I don't see any hope here. A person reaching 70... The Dasha and Nanta Dasha and Vinshotri are not at all favorable. In Gemini, it is not favorable. Future transits not favorable. The sunset of his life he has reached is 70 years. Then I remembered my Guruji had said 30 years ago, within a period of 6 months, we three will go away. So with that feeling, I came to Delhi. I didn't tell him. I only told others, I wish doctors prove right. And I go wrong. Astrologically, I found it impossible. March 1980 in Delhi, I got a letter from a friend in Calcutta that the wife of Chandi Das Chatterjee, whose horoscope I have given to you, is no more. She died of cancer. June 1980, I get a telegram. Guruji no more. September 1980, I get a letter, Chandidas Chatterjee, no more. March to September, within a period of six months, all the three leave the world. And walking on the road in 1948, my Guruji has, had said, we are here only for 30 years more. And within a space of six months, all the three will go away. So when I got it, I got and worked on the horoscopes. It is a yogi telling through his powers. It is an astrologer working on that on very correct horoscopes. So those correct horoscopes is what I am going to discuss. Now you have understood my technique. This is what I call composite technique. This is what I call composite technique. I don't give predictions only from one angle. I work out many things. No, there are many other things. For example, you see, I will use so many horoscopes here. There are how many dashas? Minimum three dashas. Minimum three dashas. Of course, one is Char dasha, the other is the Vinshotri dasha, which fortunately he listened to me and well, he has helped me so much, he has given me his program. Mr. Charles Rutman. So, but I will not give a prediction unless I have this pro forma with me. At a glance, up and down, up and down, it keeps on moving. One event I am examining, vertical, horizontal, cross, and rechecking within the time frame. Now you give me 
a wrong horoscope with a wrong degree. Now what have you done? You have destroyed K and Ra. <laughs> you will understand, please, let me complete it, then you ask questions. Sun is 29 degrees 50 minutes. According to one Ayinansha, it becomes 1 degree 8 minutes, according to another Ayinansha in the other Rashi. Yesterday I gave you the horoscope of King Farooq. Have you got it here? In any of your notes? Are Someone else who had 29 degrees of the sun, who? Was the Duke of Windsor? Who was he? Yeah. Yesterday. Oh, sorry. Yes, King George VI, sun 29, 30 degrees in Vrishchika. Now add 1 degree and 28. Where do you reach? Dhanu. Right? What has doc Dr. Raman done? Converted the Atma Karaka into Dhara Karaka. Now have you understood my battle? Now have you understood? Converted the Atma Karaka into Dara Karaka. So you become your wife or you become your husband. <laughs> now you understand its state? You are not yourself. If you are a male, you are your wife. If you are a female, you are your husband. I said, what is this funny thing? <laughs> and all the other Karakas changed too. All the other Karakas undergo a change. Now, which Ayinansha to accept? I am teaching Gemini. I am doing a very deep research in Gemini. I cannot afford wrong Karakas and proceed. You understand my super technical problem? Please appreciate. When you say people abuse you or fight with you, I say the reason is very simple. Because I am a scientist. You want to destroy me, give me a wrong horoscope with wrong karakas, with wrong risha balance. Don't do that. I go wrong and more often than not I have seen I have gone wrong only when you have given me wrong data. Your birth time was wrong or some calculation was wrong, I note it down. I can understand 30 years ago when I was going wrong. These days I have so many techniques. I have so many cross checks. If I am going wrong, definitely the finer points which I want are wrong. Now, my request to computer gentlemen, two persons sitting here, both of you will please recheck the formula you have fed for the calculation of Mercury and Moon. I don't know, I'm not complaining anything against you, but I'm, I have a terrible complaint against Indian computer programs. In one case, a person came, I was looking at the whole thing, I said, what is the period of your marriage? He said, no. In India, straight away you have to ask with the period of marriage because even if the man has made a love to someone, we don't ask and they will not answer. It's a norm, it's that a different society. He said no. But an orthodox Indian Brahmin, he said no. I said wait. I went on asking some other questions. He said no. Which means I was going wrong completely. Then I said, please sit down. I sat down and I had to do manual calculation. He was a very important Indian. I said, you'll have to have patience. I'll have to sit down and do manual calculation. He had brought a computer program. 
when I did manual calculation, I found mercury was either just at the edge of one Rashi Mithuna, let us say, 2950 or switching over to Kirk, a literal case of Atma Karak becoming a Dara Karak. Then the order of other Karakas will undergo a change. Then I, when I did manual calculation, I found the computer mercury was wrong. From my, from my experience, I know that in all the programs, Moon, Mercury and Lagna, these three can go wrong, slight variation and they go wrong. So in your computer programs, since you too have been doing such great work for this, try to understand that super sophisticated point, Karakas, particularly Moon, Mercury and Lagna should have very fine accuracy. I always recheck the data from the Gemini angle and see whether the Karaka is correct or not. King Yar 6th Atma Karaka will become, will become Dara Karaka. You change the Ainansha and the reading will undergo a change. In this case, now I will come to two other terms. You will all calculate these things in your horoscope and keep ready. I will go slowly, but I want to make sure that you do not commit a single mistake. Fortunately, there is a book available now for you, where I have illustrated this. The term used is Upapada, U-P-A-P-A-D-A. Now forget all controversies because that in India you know we have a lot of controversies about this, that, etc. I said the best way of resolving a controversy is test it on a horoscope and find out. A scientific method is this only. I tell, I come to the class and say please, I am giving this parameter, test it on your horoscope. Tomorrow I will do that with you. Tomorrow I am going to do that with you, come prepared with your horoscope, with all that I am asking you to come prepared with, right? Upapada is, see how far the twelfth lord has gone from its own place. In this instance, who is the twelfth lord? Right? Where is Jupiter? Pardon? One, two, three, four, five, six. Right? Jupiter has gone six houses away from his place. Okay? Right? Now count six from here. One, two, three, four, five, six. I write generally 12 P or Upapada. I very simple, what is your Lagna? Mithuna. Where is your Venus? In the Lagna. So 12, 1, so your Upapada becomes Kark. Is it clear? Eight minute. Where is your mercury? In his own place. So, Upapada is Gemini. What is your Lagna? 
Tula, who is the 12th lord? Mercury. Where is Mercury? In Tula. In Tula. 1-2. Right? Progress? 1-2. Then from there count 1-2. So your Upupada is Vrishchik. Right? Clear? Is it clear to everyone? Yes, Upupada, your Upupada. That is from your Lagna, see where the twelfth lord is. If the twelfth lord is in his own place, the twelfth house becomes Upupada. If the twelfth lord has travelled four houses, take them, progress them by four houses more. For instance, I will keep on reading off. Just listen to me and you, it will clear to you. Karkalagna, Cancer. The twelfth lord is Mercury. In Vrishchika. Vrishchik means? Scorpio. Count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It has gone 6 houses. Now count 6 house from Scorpio. So you know Aries is the Upupada. Clear? Leo ascendant, moon in the lagna, where is Upupada? Right? Leo ascendant, the twelfth lord has gone one, two. From their progress, one, two. Leo is the Upupada. Right? For a Leo. Each, each case, what is your lagna? My lagna is Scorpio. Scorpio. Where is your Venus? Is in Aries. Aries. Gone how many houses? Seven. So come back. Six. So your Upupada is Libra. Clear? Where is your moon? My moon? Huh. Seventh house. Seventh house. Seventh house. So your Upupada becomes Kanya, Vargo. Right? Because you are a Simha Lagna. Right? It is actually used for all Padas, but again they have created a created lot of controversy in India. So, I am at the moment using only three padas. One pada is upopada, right? Which I taught you. What am I doing? I want a piece of chalk. Here it is, okay. Upopada is for the twelfth. Same thing you take for Lagna. Lagna Lord, how far has he gone? Leo Ascendant and Sun in Leo. So the Lagna Lord is in Lagna. So this is known as Pad Lagna. Or Arudha Lagna. So the distinction between Upapada and Pada is Pada is related to birth horoscope and Upapada is related to the twelfth. Now mine is Tula Lagna, Aries. Venus in my own Lagna. So my Upapada is Tula, my Pada is Tula. Right? Someone has Tula Lagna. Ah, let us say the Mesh Lagna, as in this case. Best example, Mars. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 
तो हिज आरूर लगना इज एक्वेरियस राइट इज इट क्लियर टू यू क्लियर टू एवरी वन पार्टन यस सेम वर्ड सिनोनिम समन विल से पद लगना समन विल से आरूर लगना ये पार्टन देन दैट इज उपपदा यस नो चेंज ही हैज टू ट्रैवल आउट ऑफ हिज हाउस इफ ही इज सिटिंग इन हिज ओन हाउस व्हाई आर यू गोइंग इन सर्चिंग आउट साइड Huh? <laughs> you have come from Gujarat here, so therefore Upopada should be very important for you in your prediction. I will tell you later. Be careful. Upopada is the twelfth lord. How far has he travelled from his house? Progress is so much, right? Now. the third term i am going to use repeatedly is the word dara pada dara pada is the pada of the seventh lord right i am not going to use other padas because There are sixteen types of Jaimini dashas known as Padanada, Padanadhan Sh dasha. Sixteen different dashas depending upon very accurate namantras. So that research of mine is going on. But for your purposes, since I am going to take up Jaimini Char dasha only, I am repeatedly going to use. some terms karakantra clear to you karakantra that is the navantra occupied by atmakarak i am going to use the second word dara karakantra that is the navantra occupied by dara karak i am going to use the word upapada i am going to use the word arudha then i am also going to use the word dara pad dara means seventh dara is wife in this horoscope who is the seventh lord venus now from the seventh house count how far has he gone 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 live right now count live from here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 10. so this is 7 p r dara pada this is upapada right Now in USA, when you keep on asking questions about relationships, you must make use of dara karaka, dara karaka antra, upapada, and dara pada. Got it? I told that in this case, when I was transferred from Calcutta, he was passing through the dasha of Capricorn, Makar dasha, right? At a glance, I see Makar dasha contains Upapada. right at a glance i see makar contains dara karakansha at a glance i see from makar dasha dara pad falls in the sixth house of disease at a glance i see in the sixth house of disease dara pad gets associated with rahu 
and at a glance I see Mars and Saturn aspecting Dharapada. Now see where is Mars and Saturn in this horoscope. Yes, I will come to that later, you are correct. Now remember Gemini's aspects, Gemini aspects from cardinal to fixed, fixed to cardinal and mutable to mutable, right? Where is Mars in this horoscope? Pardon? Mutable. So, aspecting Virgo, Gemini, right? And very Saturn. Aspecting. So, I find seventh Pada with Rahu, aspected by Saturn, aspected by Mars, and I am entering the period of Capricorn. From there I see nothing good for his wife. And the doctors say the operation is successful. Yes? Is there any significance to the fact that the Kamsha and the Dada Kamsha are also 2 and 12 from each other? Well, I don't ask me that question right now. We will come to that later. At the moment, you will get confused if you go into all that. You may all do the research like this on later. At the moment, please stick only to what I am telling you. Reaching the Dasha of Capricorn. From here, you find Dara Pada in Mithuna with Rahu, aspected by Saturn and aspected by Mars and these are the Gemini aspects, not Parashari aspects. To get used to Gemini, yes please. How, how would you know that uh, this wasn't uh, lost or divorced? Pardon? How would you know that this wasn't lost or divorced because the sixth house can signify litigation? That's a beautiful... There, there are many other ways of looking at it, but it's a good question. Instead of disease, it could be a case of divorce. It could be a case of accident. Right? There could be so many things. In this case, the person came, the background was known to me. That is why in that book, uh, Vinshotri Desha, I have given that CBI, the first memory task tablet. Against the known background, you give prediction to people. That is better in the beginning. The known background here is his wife was ill. Right? And I am seeing according to my astrology, the doctors would go wrong. One gentleman, yes? Saturn is, no, we will go to Karakas and tell you, instead of Saturn, we will go to Karakas and I will explain, take up the whole case, whole of the day today. I am coming to Capricorn Dasha and from here I am seeing Capricorn contains the Dara Karakans wife. From Capricorn in the 6th house, I had Dharapad with Rahu, aspected by Saturn and Mars. And this Saturn and Mars, you have to take the Gemini aspects. So, I am not find, finding anything very comfortable for the wife. In Vinshotri Dasha, I find Venus Mercury. Right? One American gentleman, some very rich man, came to me in India years ago. I was working out his horoscope. 
I am asking the question put by Mr. Jim. Answering that. As seeing the horoscope, I said, well, during this period, you could possibly have got married, but you had perhaps a very intimate girlfriend. He said, yes, correct. I had. But I see something tragic happening to her. What is it? And I stopped there. My method is this. I see something tragic happening. He said, can you spell it out more? I said, I'll have to work in further details, lot of details. I said, wait. I see a vehicular accident. He said, exactly. My girl, my girlfriend got killed in a car accident. So you can distinguish one event from the other event, but it will take good deal of work and application of many more techniques. Every question can be answered on an accurate horoscope on a very elaborately prepared one and when, once you begin to go into those details. That is why I talk about this one hour guillotine of US and get irritated. This one hour guillotine means in one hour you just see the horoscope and read up. It is not possible. Sometimes the examination of one event can take you 10 days. And sometimes the examination of that event can take you half a minute. Make no mistake. But if you are working on a very correct horoscope and if you follow the composite approach which I am talking about, let me assure you 80% times you will be sound predictors. But you cannot afford to miss the steps I am talking about. So I will revise. I am talking about Karakansha. I am talking about Dara Karakansha. I am talking about Upupada. I am talking about Padalagna or Arudha. And I am talking about Dara Pada. These are the words I am going to use repeatedly, apart from the Karaka, Zatma Karaka, Amati Karaka, Bhatra Karaka, etc. Right? In all the Gemini books, including the finest book now in the market of P.A. Shastri, you find they all referred only to Atma Karaka and stop there. My research has taken me, I said, when that great Gemini has, Rishi has used the other Karakas, those other Karakas also have to have some meaning. If it is hidden in some tradition, I cannot wait for some Pandit to come out and give me the secrets. Better is, I work out myself on this. And we started working out and we came out with beautiful results. So I make use of all Karakas. Mine is the only book where I will show you how I make use of all Karakas. In any other book on Gemini you get, there is a reference only to Atma Karaka and a reference to Atma Karaka, just like saying, someone asked me, have you seen President Clinton? I said, no, I have seen his photo. They refer to Atma Karaka only to that extent in the book and stop there. They do not even know how to use it. But they have written books, they have become world famous. So don't do that. When Gemini has given other Karaka, the other Karakas also have to have a definite meaning. And in this small book, I am showing you, giving instances about all Karakas. And showing you how they can be used. But, I am confining myself only to one dasha at the moment, char dasha. Absorb it very properly. Repeatedly keep on doing exercise. Once you absorb it, 
then only I can talk of other things. Because my disappointment in November 94, when I was teaching that class at San Rafael was terrible. In June, I had come and taught Gemini. And in November, when I was saying in the Chara Dasha, which is sixth or eighth from the Upupada, there is marital tension. No one in the class was understanding. I said, I have wasted six months. A major research produced in advanced techniques of that book, you know, advanced technique, that book, there you'll see Shivra Sharma's major technique. So when from a particular Charadasha Rashi, Upupada is falling in the 6th, 8th or the 12th, be careful. In this case, the Dasha you have reached contains the Arakarakansha, Upupada and from here, the Saptam Pada is falling in the 6th house, is with Rahu, is aspected by Saturn, is aspected by Mars. See, one simple event I have examined from how many angles? Count. Now count. One simple event. One Upapada. Two Dara Karakansha. Three Dharapada, fourth aspects on Dharapada, five in Vinshotri Dasha, Dasha of Venus, seventh lord, and six the sub period of Mercury in the seventh house, and finally I see the future. Sale Sati coming. Also, just to point out, it's, it's not just the seventh floor, it's Marquesh, it's both second and seventh floor. Yes, in Vinshotri. So, in one stroke, you are able to see the composite technique. Here, Charadasha, here, Vinshotri Dasha, and transits. All converge only towards one point. No hope. Do you have a situation where they don't converge to the same point? No, we'll come to that. Many times it happens. Can I assume that uh, Upa, uh, Upa, Pada. Upa Pada? Well, is, is it not clear to you? Yeah, well, I just want to make sure it's clear. Ah. Okay. What's your lagna? No, I, I know how to calculate. No, no. What is your lagna? Answer. Where is your Mercury? Mercury in the eleventh house. Eleventh house, which means your Mercury has gone to the twelfth house from his place. Right. Calculate the twelfth house from Taurus. So your Upopada is Mesha. It is clear. Yeah, that's clear. Huh. The, the question I want to know is: Can I consider the Upopada? To be the sixth house, or basically disease and illness and accidents of the spouse? Yes, Upapada. It can be accident, it can be relating to spouse, so therefore Karaka and Pada and Dasha, and along with I want you always to combine with Vinshotri. Now, a clarification. Vinshotri, you are seeing the Dasha of the seventh lord and the Antar Dasha of the planet in the seventh house. Clear to you? And in Gemini, I find a clarification here. So, when I say composite technique, I am not confining myself only either to Gemini or only to Vinshotri. I am fusing both into one and this is what I call the composite technique. Clear to you? You are asking something? Can you generalize and say that any pada of any house represents that house? No, I will not because there is a lot of controversy. Sita Ram Jha says when the seventh pada goes, come to the lagna, it will progress to the tenth house. 
So, if you take all that, it will create a lot of controversy. I'm, my research is on. I think I will be able to clarify sometime later. Anyway, in all the Gemini text, Arudha Lagna and Upupad Lagna are made use of. Well, you can, I don't know, Gemini has given that. That is correct. What you are saying is correct. Twelfth house is sixth from the seventh. So, that is made use of also for. Actually, Upupada is also made use of for predicting the number of brothers and children, so brothers and sisters. It does not come out correct. For the quality of money, it does not come out correct. So many things they have given, they will just take up some shloka, give a translation. You read it, or they will write an article. You read it, you get totally confused. So, unless you test it, do not accept it. Follow that method. Well, it is okay. Theoretically, what you are saying is all right. In practice, if it is not working, I will not accept. Unless you have this rigid scientific posture today towards Vedic astrology, you will not be able to take benefit out of Vedic astrology and you will also be encouraging hundreds of frauds in Vedic astrology, which is what is happening in India. The man will come and reel off a quotation because he has memorized something and do all this. But it is unnecessary. You say, show me the result. I will show you the result. Show me the result that it is working. Then I accept. Don't tell me you have got so many books, so many quotations, so you can do that. No. Yes, I, yes, I, I, political part, I should not be required to discuss with you anymore. Now it is clear to you, it will take you just one hour to go through the book, go through the examples given in the book, work it out yourself. So tomorrow when I come, I can take up any horoscope and begin to discuss straight away technically. So, from tomorrow, it will only be practical examples all through. Application of predictive techniques. Then you are not going to stop me and ask me this question. You have to promise to me. You will understand the calculations. Then only I can proceed further. Yes, there are other, yes, good thing, good, thank you, very good. Now, for Aquarius and Scorpio, before we go for the lunch, we say thank you so much. A very serious mistake I committed. I should have elaborated this point. In the case of Aquarius and Scorpio, you have to find out the stronger of the two lords, right? The stronger of the two lots means in the case of Scorpio, stronger between Mars and Ketu. In the case of Aquarius, stronger between Saturn and Rahu. How do you decide the strength? There are certain priorities, some principles. Principle number one is it is given in the book. You can understand it mentally. A planet associated with one planet is stronger than the other A planet without association. Which means, take a hypothetical example. Vrishchik is the Lagna, Ma, that is Scorpio. Mars and Ketu I have to see. Ketu is in the third house from Vishchika, that is in Makara, with one planet, with Venus. And Mars is in Karka, ninth house, alone. 
So who is stronger? K2. Because K2 has an association. So a person who has, who has got a bodyguard is stronger than a person without a bodyguard. Clear? A person who has two bodyguards is stronger than a person who has one bodyguard. Clear? So, same thing in the case of Saturn Rahu. But suppose both are alone, unassociated. In that case, the degrees will decide. The planet with higher degrees. Now, where do you come into a real difficulty? The re real difficulty comes when Ketu, let us say, is in Scorpio and Mars is in some other place, some other house. Right? Or when Mars is in Scorpio and Ketu in some other house. In such a situation, the planet in Scorpio must be overlooked. He has no claims. If Ketu is in Scorpio and Mars is in Sagittarius, the Ketu, the Dasha of Capricorn will be of one year, of, uh, Scorpio will be of one year, 1 plus 2 minus 1. K2 or Mars, if both are in Scorpio, then full 12 years. But if K2 is here and Mars elsewhere, neglect K2. If Mars is Scorpio, K2 elsewhere, forget Mars. Same in the case of Saturn. Saturn is in Aquarius, Rahu somewhere else. So count up to Rahu, forget Saturn. If Rahu is in Aquarius, Saturn elsewhere, count up to this. So this is the only situation in which you can ignore one of the two lots totally if he happens to be in his own house. In only case of two Rashi, Scorpio and Aquarius, if one of the two lords happens to be in his own house, ignore him. So now strength is decided by factors, three factors. Factor number one, association. Who is the stronger? A planet? K2 is, let us say, 0 degrees, but has two planets with him. And Rahu is 28 degrees, but has one planet with him. K2 is stronger, because K2 has two planets with him. Right? The, the first factor is, when you have to decide the strength, first of all, decide the association strength. Right? The second factor is, if both are alone, then you are going to decide according to the higher degree. Here again, lot of controversy exists in India. And one of the controversies is created by the Varanasi school of Sita Ram Jha and others. They say in the case of Rahu or Ketu, deduct it from 30 and decide the longitude. Because they move in re reverse direction. Don't do that. You will commit a mistake. I have tested it. I have found that wrong. Treat, take the degree of Ketu normally as you take that of any other planet. Of Rahu as you take that of any other planet. Don't deduct it from 30 to decide because it moves in a reverse direction. You are asking. No, in, in Gemini, you have to take Rahu, Ketu as normal planets, not as Karakas. Right, but as bodyguards. No, they will be with as bodyguards. If they are associated, they will be bodyguards. So, in other words... As Karakas, they don't come into play. That is my only difference. So, if I have a lower degree Mars with Rahu, then that, that 
Mars with Rahu and Ketu has no planet. So then he is stronger. Mars is stronger. So first is a planet associated is stronger than a planet not associated. Number two, when you have to decide on the basis of degrees, a planet with higher degrees is stronger than a planet with lower degrees. Number three, the most hypothetical situation that can ever arise. Most hypothetical situation, which never arises, but for argument's sake, you should remember it. I started by telling you that you should calculate the planets right up to seconds if you want to do Gemini. Don't forget this advice of mine. Once you calculate up to minutes, you find two candidates contesting for the same post. Once you calculate up to seconds, the planet with higher degrees, higher seconds, naturally goes up. But take that extremely hypothetical situation when both Mars and Ketu, let us say, are 15 degrees, 40 minutes and 32 seconds each. Extremely hypothetical. I never seen it in my life. I talked about Vemuri Ramurti Shastri and his advice was finally decide on the basis of seconds in the case of a conflict. That is very appealing and I have tried that. But I am taking a very hypothetical situation where they are both equal. So many minutes, so many degrees, so many minutes, so many seconds, both equal, total. Now what do you do? You would probably discard this whole system for that chart. Pardon? You would probably discard this whole use the JV for that chart. Nay. In Gemini, Chara Dasha, Chara Rashi, Sthira Rashi, uh, Sthir Rashi and Disabhav Rashi are what you call, let me get used to your terms, cardinal, fixed and mutable. Am I right? Yes. Fixed is stronger than cardinal and mutable is stronger than fixed. This is a recurring principle of Gemini. Sthira is stronger than Chara. Dvisabhav is stronger than Sthira. A recurring principle of Gemini. Made use of. For extra fine predictions. So, I am taking that extremely hypothetical situation when you have Mars and Ketu, same degrees, same minutes, same seconds. It has never happened. And no one has ever told me that it is so in any horoscope. But I am imagining, suppose you come across a situation like this, finally what is the third test you apply? The test is, if a planet is in a mutable sign, it is stronger than a planet in fixed sign. If a planet is in a fixed sign and the other in the cardinal sign, the fixed sign will prevail. So, each sign has its own strength. Right? So, that is the extreme situation. Pardon? What are both planets are in mutable sign? Both planets are in mutable sign. Both planets were in? Supposing both are in mutable sign. Uh, yeah. Yes. If both are in mutable signs, it's a good question again. 
take another extreme hypothetical situation. If both are in mutable signs and both are equally strong, same degree, same minute, same seconds. As I said, these are only hypothetical questions. In that case, how will you decide? If the man is more than 20 or 30 years old, I will take up his events of life, verify which one is answering my question. That's all. I will do that. I will not come across and I will never come across. I will never come across a case in which both will be exactly same degree, same minute, same seconds. Yes, yes, correct. Gemini's Rashi Bal and Graha Bal is a totally different method. Does Dasha exhaust before the life ever? No, it's a good question, thank you. I don't know about an American. If an ever, if an Indian comes and sits with you and if he's sitting in front of you, keep on working out the Dasha till you get tired and he gets tired. Bas abhi aare, long. I'll, before you go for lunch, I'll tell you, it's a good question you ask me because you think it is the end of life. It now, it's a second cycle repeat, same way, char dasha. In Calcutta, as it happened, I was working out someone's dasha and somebody, I was required to go to the restroom. When I came back, the man was sitting and weeping. I said, what happened? That should have been 75 or 76. He said, I'm not going to live beyond 78. I said, who told you that? He said, he has stopped at 78. <laughs> I said, when I reach your 1978, I was required to go to the bathroom, my dear fellow. <laughs> If my go going to bathroom is the end of your span of life, I can do nothing about it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, well, please, gentlemen, you please sit down. Hey, eight minute, Rakesh ji, eight minute. Now you will all please sit down and work out the dashas with, come on, ek, do, teen, char, paanch, kitne hamare paas? Ek, one, two, you'll take the help of three, four, you please stand and show your faces to them. You'll also help, Julia. Now you'll have, so you'll save me the labor, and yes, you'll please save me the labor. I don't want to do this calculation of char dasha on the table anymore. Mr. Rakesh Sharma suggested this morning, why can't you take the help, help of the whole team available? After lunch, sit down and work out. Yes. We can come back after one and a half hour or two hours, but then make sure that you have done your chair dasha properly.